Hi there everybody, Peter of England. Today I'm going to bring you a video concerning the Section 68 Good Samaritan Drafts um, under the Bills of Exchange Act 1882. Most of you will be aware, and if you are not aware, you should be aware, that there is something called Payer for Honour Supra Protest. That is an intervention in effect whereby a third party intercedes on an individual's behalf to pay for something that is dishonoured whether that is a, a bill or a contractual basis uh, is moot, but this is the, the, the main objective of what's called the Section 68 Good Samaritan Drafts. Now, they are very important for all the people who've got them so far and the people that I'm going to encourage now to take them in the fact that you must understand the principle behind the, the actual draft itself. A lot of the responses or the pushbacks from the lenders or the creditors de centaur, that means the false creditors, uh, when they reply to the draft, are calling them checks, or they're calling them we cannot accept this method of payment, or they're making uh, a, a allusion to the fact that they're somehow connected with Weabank, or they're connected to Peter of England. None of those things are true. What in effect, they are, the drafts, the Section 68 drafts, are instruments, commercial paper, drawn on a trust account. And therefore, drawn on a trust account means that they completely short-circuit the creditor-debtor relationship that the financial organisations, other banks, other government and the judiciary have perpetrated onto you in the belief that there is only one route to go, i.e. you borrow something and then you have to pay it back. Now, that is not the whole story. That is not the case. There are other methods of doing it. So this legal tender is also another thing they use against you, saying we cannot accept this, this check or this promissory note because it's not legal tender. Of course it's not legal tender. Legal tender has a very, very narrow definition, and that is the fact that it is Bank of England, or in some cases uh, Northern Ireland or Scottish banknotes of certain denominations, and coin, coin of the realm, coin printed or minted by the Treasury. So we never come along and say that they are legal tender, so that's strike number one against them. Mentioning Weir Bank, strike two. Mentioning Peter of England in any capacity, strike three, because they're drawn against a straw man account. So that's the, the underlying basis for the counter argument for anyone refusing the Section 68 drafts. The main priority, though, you need to get into your head is the following. You have tendered a payment. In the United Kingdom, you can look under the Bills of Exchange Act. In the United States, you can look under UCC 3-603, tender of payment, and the dishonouring of a tender of payment and its consequences. So you need to look at this to understand the power of what you are creating when you first of all send the draft into the creditor, so-called. Now, why this is becoming of greater urgency more so than ever before, is uh, I've just been watching, uh, or it was pointed out to me, I've been watching a video on YouTube uh, by a, um, a, a poster or a creator called Bannerman. I'll put a, a reference to that in the, in the link below. B-A-N-A-M-A-N. -A -A it's a channel based in the United Kingdom, and it's aimed at helping individuals who are in uh, danger of having their home repossessed, or in fact, have had their houses repossessed and the various security or enforcement agencies coming in and barring access by putting shutters and all sorts of uh, security features onto their house. So the idea behind all this is a, a quick reaction force, a, a, a group of individuals that come together to prevent the repossession in, in the first place. So I'm going to just for the benefit of people out there, just show you very quickly uh, a section of
This is some footage from the, the channel. You can easily go on to the, this one was posted on the 10th of August. It's very, very uh, consequent. Um, Okay, so you can you can get the, the the gist of this. Police think they are boss. This was reference to Derbyshire Constabulary, evidently. Um, and so what I'm what I'm trying to cover here is the dilemma that everybody's facing. And if you're not facing it now, you might be facing it very soon in the future. And uh, that is there is since the the uh, the pandemic there has been a naturally engineered, if that is not a non secateur, doesn't follow, a non secateur that inflation has begun to take off, bank rates have increased and people are, are therefore suffering not only financial inflation, but they're facing uh, a diminution of their, their, their salaries, their pay is not going up in line. Therefore, everything is becoming more difficult. And this is in keeping with the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab's plan for you will own nothing, but you will be happy. The longer term agenda here is to dispossess you of your property rights. So where does that, where does that leave this scenario and these counter offenses by groups like Bannerman and um, other like-minded, should we say, vigilante groups that are trying to intercede on behalf of individuals who are being repossessed. Now, he, this gentleman, and many of them in the videos there are encouraging you to take action. One of the base actions that I think you can take initially is to offer a payment. Therefore, through the the the, uh, the Section 68 drafts, the Good Samaritan ones that you will find reference to on the Weirbank uh, website, then this is an intervention by myself offering to come into the equation and offer as a third party uh, an interlocutor, an intervention to make payment on your behalf. So that is a very important uh, first step. What you also now need to start to realize Anyone that's got a, a let's say, just a, a faint inkling that they could be in a repossession drama somewhere down the line, you've got to realize that the documents, the mortgage agreement, not a contract actually, the mortgage agreement that you initially signed is in fact a trust deed or a deed of trust. Uh, Go and get your, your mortgage particulars. Go and see if you can find your original mortgage agreement and look through that. One of the big giveaways, which proves that it is actually a trust document, is it actually states that the bank has the power to foreclose or intervene and force a sale if you do not substantially keep up payments as, as regarding the, the so-called agreement initially or ab initio. Now, all these references to powers are to trust powers. Therefore, you know full well that there is a legal title, which the bank hold, and there is a beneficial title. So not to get too inclined into the legality of it. What that means is, and as these people say on the Bannerman video, there is no inherent right for the bank to take the property from you unless it is proved in a court of law, arguable, that you have violated a contract. Now, if the contract has been fraudulent from, from the outset, then there is a substantial argument there that they wouldn't be able to take it from you. But nobody really seems to want to get into the, the nitty gritty of this. So what I'm beginning to look at and favor here, um, and people quote things like, the, the Bill of Rights, 1685, and various other legislation where people aren't allowed to have their property taken from them unless it goes to jury trial. Um, what we need to do is maybe rally around and create some type of class action. Because what's happening uh, through, and I'm specifically using the UK as this model, but it is also applicable for people in Australia, Canada, 
United States. But for now, for the UK, the model there is that they are picking you off one at a time. And the best intentions of the quick reaction forces or these uh, common law constables that have been sworn in by various groups, it's always a reaction after. Now, uh, for example, on the video that I've just shown you there, um, the, the individual, I don't know his name, he comes there and he says, the police are committing treason. Uh, they don't know that they're committing treason. So what I'd like to quickly address here is, is that in fact the case? Are they actually committing treason? Because to commit a, a crime generally, it takes two, two aspects. There's a mental component and a physical component. The physical component is what's called the actus reus, the actual physical task of having done it. The mens rea is the mental subjective component belonging to the individual's subjective view of was I actually aware that I was committing a crime when I did what I did? So in a nutshell, that's that. Now, the police, generally speaking, are just like the general public. They don't really know too much outside their individual scope of operation. So to be quite honest, um, their, um, their overview and the people who tell them what to do are the Association of Chief of Police Officers. It's a severely, deeply entrenched, Masonic, white, male, Protestant environment. And these Masonic lodges that control the ACPO are the ones that have brought you the surveillance cameras, the tasers, the, the special cuffing techniques, uh, the body armor. Uh, they basically turned the police into a military operation on your streets. So that's really what you're up against. And for what there happens when you are going into a scenario where you are being, uh, your property is being taken from you, um, certain things are, are happening. There is the, what's called the Counterfeiting and Forgery Act 19, uh, I think that's, I'm not sure, I think it's 1981. Uh, you've also got the Fraud Act. You've also got the Theft Act 1968 as amended. But the principal part of the Theft Act is that when these police are coming along to back up the bailiff operation there, they are operating under what's called a fraud and using counterfeit documents. This is well um, established and can be proven. But at the time, if you are there standing on your own, arguing with the bailiffs, with the police there to back them up because you're refusing to allow them entry into the property, it gets very, very difficult, very, very tense, blood pressure rises, and you've got the full force of the state bearing down on you. That's why it's imperative that you have people with you. It's the only way to defend the castle is by having people there um, at the moat helping you. So, <clears throat> The, the warrant of possession that the bailiffs deliver or come along is totally fraudulent. It is a, uh, it's a violation. It's what's called under the Theft, theft Act, um, I think it's Section 20, obtaining pecuniary advantage by deception. Um, that's the fundamental thing that they're doing because under the Theft Act, it's Section 1, a person is guilty of theft if with the view to gain for himself or another, he dishonestly appropriates property belonging to another and thief and steal shall be construed accordingly. That's the game over. Now, if they're coming with fraudulent court order documents, documents that have no stamp on, they've just got a photocopy mark of a circle with a crown in it, there is no judge's name on, there's no signature, it's all a presumption and a commercial necessity to keep the wheels rolling. The fact that there is a legal title, the fact that there is a beneficial interest or an equitable title, when they say, how much equity do you have in your property when you go for a, a second mortgage or a loan? Those are the giveaways that this shouldn't be in magistrates. It shouldn't be in the district or crown court. It has to be in chancery. So that's your first port of call, people, a writ of quo waranto for the court to prove its jurisdiction. Obviously, if you don't know these things, what happens is, and 99% of all these cases go through the courts, and I'd say 95% are even unchallenged, 
the paralegal representing uh, HSBC or uh, uh, Halifax or Nationwide, they don't even have anyone to contest it. The next thing is that the, the, the court order gets issued and the bailiffs are at the door or the, the sealing up team. So that's really where you, you, you should be taking this. There is a whole raft of things mentioned in these various videos I've just quoted. This malfeasance in public office, which is an old chestnut that, that gets, gets thrown out there. Um, the fact that the, the police and the bailiffs and maybe other security people are um, congregating together, makes it a joint conspiracy to defraud and uh, obtain uh, advantage or pecuniary advantage by pure deception. All of these things can be proven. The best place to try and prove most of it is at the time when the police are there to ensure that they go away. But if that can't be done, um, how are you supposed to act around it? And this is why I'm suggesting that what we do now is we get in touch with admin one, that's a one numeral, admin one at freemanlegalservices.com, or one word, by going on to freemanlegalservices.com website, sending us a message that you are interested in participating in a class action. So instead of going at this one at a time, where you will be divided and conquered one at a time, let's start coming together and using it as a class action, which I will do my best then to construct and steer you through. Why it's important uh, is for a whole raft of reasons, uh, but one of the things, for example, that the, the, the bailiffs rely on, the police rely on, anyone coming up and knocking on your front door relies on, is there's something called uh, an implied right of access to your front door. And that all comes about because you've got a letterbox. And the Postal Authority is the oldest corporation on the planet. As they say, all roads lead to Rome and all edicts and all dictates and all papal bowls that ever emanated from Rome always found their way to the extremes or extremities of the empire due to the Postal Service. And so it's that Postal Service aspect, the address, that is one of the major three principles that hamstrings you uh, when, if you ever apply or go to court in the first place. One is your address, the second one is your date of birth, and the third is your name. Give any of those three and you have actually given away the crown jewels to everything you, you would maybe want to achieve. So the one question that the judge ever needs to know before he will issue a writ of possession or give a repossession order or any other judgment against you is, has this individual or has this person proved himself to be alive? So a person is a dead entity. Someone that is alive is a man or a woman. And this all comes out of the Sesui Key V Act, uh, Section 4, an individual that has basically come back from the dead. Presumed dead, missing for seven years. Go and have a look at the presumptions of death. Um, uh, issued by the, the UK government on their website. It gives quite clear policies of a missing individual. When can a interim degree of or a death certificate be issued? Um, so this is the way forward for us to go. We've got to think it through a little bit more um, uh, intelligently. And for sure, any of the police, any of the senior constables, any of the... the um, chief commissioners of various constabularies looking at this, many of them don't care, granted, of what's happening because they're all juiced into the machine, the money-making machine as is, under the following reason. And this is the final part of the, the video today. This is the not the Donald Trump card. This is the Trump card for you to be aware of. The fraud isn't necessarily in the lie. So are they the police committing treason? Are the judges committing treason? Are the politicians committing treason? Yes, but not necessarily. But we have something better than that. And this is the fact that since 1944, it can be proven. 
categorically that since the Bretton Woods financial agreement in the United States, when 43 countries of the world came together to make a secret and clandestine agreement as to how the credit system would go forward and that the gold of the sovereign states would be, uh, should we say, uh, collected and put on deposit so that the gold standard would surely be retired and that the credit wheel would now start to operate. Since that time when the IMF World Bank took over for the reconstruction and the rebuilding of the peace, all those sovereign nations that were cajoled, were suckered in, were um, uh, concussed because of a world war on top of a previous world war, they all agreed and were hoodwinked into thinking better days could be created. The ink hadn't even dried on the paper when the bankers reneged on the, their promises. And so that's the scenario you face. You can prove that the banks, since 1944, but really since Warburg and Rothschilds were, uh, were made a monopolistic grip from the 15th century on Warburgs, then Rothschilds from 17, 1700s, 1750s. From those points on, the principal banking families had a death grip on the throat of, of the people worldwide. So from that, if we can prove, and I assure you, you can prove that the judge is on the payroll of the IMF, that all government ministers, Rishi Sunak, Boris Johnson, Cameron, Osborne, Blair, you name it, Saeed Javid, all of them are on the payroll of the IMF, not of a sovereign national government known as the United Kingdom PLC or Crown, we can prove that. That means that they are silent partners in a joint conspiracy and a joint conspiracy is not necessarily the lie, it's the concealment of the lie. That's why you need to come together now with this information and start speaking to the police by saying, hey fella, did you know that the Secretary of State in the United Kingdom holds the highest legal authority within the United Kingdom? That means they tell and control all the chief constables under you, all the police commissioners, for the Metropolitan Police, for the City of London being an exception. They control and dictate those agendas. But did you also know that by definition, they have a seat on the board of Interpol? And Interpol is a foreign ju ju jurisdictional alien enterprise based in Europe. And the allegiance under their terms and conditions is that they have a prime allegiance to Interpol, not to their sovereign so-called country. And this is all based around the European Union directives that came out post-war, whereby now all these people are juiced in and in the same collective club. And that's the power going forward. So if you're going into a courtroom scenario and you are either ignorant or uh, you've been dragged in for whatever reason, then one of your first lines of defense is, judge, you know, you look bought to me, yeah? This isn't contempt. I can actually prove, or your honor, if I could prove that you were on the payroll of a foreign organization that was an antithesis to the sovereign nature of so-called the United Kingdom, but you didn't know, do you think you should recuse yourself? Or if you don't know, um, and I show you, don't you think that's a lack of due diligence and a malfeasance in, in office? But they do know, they know the degree to which this is all compromised, and it's compromised to the very last degree. So they know what the game is, they know that there is an overall control agenda, and the control agenda is what's being played out here. The only way you can defeat it, the only way you can stop this imposition of the next thing, the central bank digital currency, which will have a time stamp so you can never accumulate wealth over time unless you are privy to being part of a, an elite group or enterprise. 
um, means that after so many days, if you haven't spent it on the things they will allow you to spend it, you'll lose it. So the main thing now going forward, and I'll just make sure I, I've got the, the, the main agenda here. Um, dispossession of property comes under Magna Carta. The mortgage agreement, you should be in chancery division because the giveaway is the terms and conditions of the mortgage specify powers and trust powers. Also, within that agreement, you can see that there is a beneficial or equitable interest and there is a legal interest. If those two are present and nobody disagrees, it cannot be held in a magistrate's court. It has to be in chancery. And magistrates and district are not chancery. Chancery is equity. Equity is fairness. That's where we need to drag it back. So refuse the jurisdiction of the court. Do something clever. Yeah? Uh, uh, and we can show you. So admin1 at freemanlegalservices.com is the place to go initially. And this doesn't mean even if you're ahead with your mortgage, uh, even if you don't think this is going to happen, get in touch with us because they are coming for you. And as the inflation rates go up and as interest rates go up, if it keeps going like it is, you will find the payments almost impossible to create or make and therefore you'll be in trouble. Um, just remember some minor details here. Yeah, all these, these organizations like Marston's and the repossession legal companies, they're all juiced in. They're all juiced in with the judiciary, with the, with the lawyers, with the law society, with the, the, the bar association. They've all been brought in over hundreds of years to protect the bankers. Bankers pay for government. Government is there to levy taxes on you to pay the bankers. Governments only come into power because they've been funded historically to take possession of land from either another individual, a series of individuals, or another so-called sovereign state. And that's where we, we find ourselves. So you must reclaim your estate. And these Section 68 drafts are the things you need initially to help you in that direction. And come now and do one thing, admin1 at freemanlegalservices.com. Email us, say you want to get involved in a class action and... Uh, alternatively, if you're in a, 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 an immediate situation, then go to the Weirbank website, look at the Section 68 drafts. Those will commence the, the best part for you. And as we go forward and we now show you how to, to do these other things, um, it will become clearer as the way forward. So thank you very much for watching. Pass it on, notify, etc. Peter of England saying thank you.